Welcome back, webheads, and you're here for 2022's Top 10 Comic Book Covers. Fans, this is week number 10, and this is the video series where each and every week you guys get to pick on which is your favorite comic book covers of the week based off of the ones I provide for you. So welcome back, everybody. So before we get started with this party here, let's give a quick shout out to the sponsor, Mutant Beaver Comics. Mutant Beaver Comics is a global leader specializing in exclusive variants with over 900 exclusives in their store. They ship worldwide on a daily basis. Their mandate is to offer the widest selection of exclusive variants on the planet along with top-notch customer service. If you guys enter promo code CORNER10, and not only can you save 10% on your first purchase, but every other purchase after that. So don't miss out on those exclusives, MutantBeaverComics.com. All right, webheads, we have some unfinished business to take care of. First, we have to find out who won the wild card, who got the nomination for comic book cover of the year, who was the pick that I picked for the week that we couldn't vote on, and the winner of the contest. So here we go. The wild card winner wound up going to Detective Comics issue 1050, the Will Jack variant. That cover will still stay in the competition and people will vote on it with the other second place finishers in their groups. The group one winner officially goes to Ghost Rider issue one, the Lucio Perello variant B. So that gets a nomination for comic book cover of the year and we'll vote at the end of the year to see who wins. Next, we have to find out what was the cover that I picked for last week since we didn't get to vote on the, that week's covers. And I picked uh, Strange Issue 1, the Art Germ variant. So that will move on into the future rounds as well. And then we got to talk about who won the contest. Now, if you won this contest and you are in the US, please notify me. My email is in the description below. And the winner of this a Daredevil, Woman Without Fear, and the Mutant Beaver exclusive Moon Knight issue one variant, that winner winds up going to Zach Waxali. Hopefully I said your name right, Zach. So congratulations on winning those books. Like I said, email me. In It's in the description box below. All right, so now let's finally get into this contest here. Kicking off this week's covers with number 10. And number 10, it goes to Sabretooth Issue 2. Um... This book is quite interesting as you get to see all kinds of uh, action here between Sabretooth and Magneto. This is the variants cover and for some reason I didn't put the description or who, who did this one. But nevertheless, it's a nice looking cover as you get to see Sabretooth just busting through his change and he's got some crazy ass facial expression in there. I love the detail that went to it and uh, obviously Magneto is there trying to balance everything out. Great looking cover. If you want to see this win, make sure you vote in the comments section below. No more than one vote per person, guys. And also, if you don't like any of these top 10 comic pub book covers that I provide for you here today, guys, you can always write in your own. It could start to trend and overtake the other top 10. All right, so let's continue moving forward here with number nine. And this one goes to Spider-Gwen, Gwenverse, issue one. This is the Ivan Towel variant A. I picked this one because this one is a little bit different from maybe all the others that we've seen in the past. And I love how Gwen is on this building and you're looking at it as like this diagonal point of view. I love where the logo is placed on this cover and Spider-Gwen's just listening to her headphones with the hair blowing in the wind. You get to see the little pigeon flying across. Her face looks a little bit, you know, white. Maybe that's the purpose because she's like a ghost spider. Yes. You know, it's all the names that she had. Whatever the case, I loved it. I love her turquoise uh, Converse that she's wearing. Really cool looking cover. Something, again, a little bit different. If this one is your favorite, let's make sure you vote for it.
All right, next, coming in at number eight. This one goes to Captain Carter, issue one. This is the Marvel Studios animation variant. This one was really cool, um, as you get to see the character just like she would be in the Disney Plus show, What If, and you get to see her up front and center. It looks like she's getting ready to punch the bad guys here, and it says, Captain Carter, what if Peggy Carter became the world's first super soldier? And uh, that's pretty cool. And then it says, introducing Steve Rogers as the Hydra Stomper. <laughs> I like that, dude. I think that's pretty That's pretty fun. I love how it gives that old school comic book feel to it. Look at that little corner box with the Watcher in it. A lot of detail, a lot of cool things in this book. So if that's your favorite, you know what you got to do. You got to vote. All right, coming in at number seven, we have... I Am Batman, Issue 7, Cover B, done by Francisco Mantina, the cardstock variant. This is always in the countdowns because there's so much detail that goes to this. Here we get to see, uh, was, is this Jace Batman? I think that it is because he's got that mouth covered or whatever it is. Um, or it could be regular Batman. I don't know. I don't follow that chase batman so i don't know what he really looks like i just thought the cover was kick ass and this is something i would want to buy as an action figure <laughs> but you get to see like these uh these sticks that he has in his hand or whatever it is and batons maybe i should say and you get to see the his mouth is covered up his eyes are lit up red and i love how the batons are kind of like glowing purple and i think that makes the pop the cover pop just a little bit of course the bats are flying all over the place you get to see the statue of liberty in the background nice looking cover francisco mantina's art is really good uh and dark as i always say <laughs> so if this one is your favorite let's vote for it coming in at number six we have a main cover here this one goes to trial of the amazons issue one done by jim cheong is that how you say the person's name? Not sure. Uh, I think this cover is absolutely a gorgeous piece of artwork. I, I love this cover. I don't know how this event's going to turn out, but Wonder Woman looks great on here as she's carrying her sphere, or his, her spear, I should say, and her uh, shield. And we get to see just all the other cast of Wonder Woman kind of like in the background, like Hippolyta and Artemis. And then we get to see Yara Flora in there. And you get to see those faces like in her cape, which I think is... is very um, artistic, right? So, awesome looking cover. Overall, Wonder Woman looks like she's ready to battle. This is a great cover. If this is your favorite, let's vote for it. All right, moving on now to the top five. This is a fun cover. This is just a portrait or a selfie, and I love this one. This one goes to Women of Marvel, issue one, the Ashley Witter variant. Love the facial expressions on all three characters here. We get to see Laura, Gabby and Jonathan the Wolverine and they're taking a selfie and we just get to see Gabby giving uh, Laura the bunny ears but she's using her one of her claws and just one of her fingers which is awesome and uh, you, she's sticking out her tongue and then look at Jonathan the Wolverine he's just giving that crazy facial expression as well and of course Laura is just like the calm one out of the bunch which is kind of kind of rare to see but it, a great looking cover the yellow background kind of makes it pop so this is just a nice looking cover it's just like oh it's a family portrait right Great stuff here. If this is your favorite, let's vote for it. All right, moving on to number four. This is an homage cover to Spider-Man issue one. This is Spawn issue 327. This is cover B done by Todd McFarlane. Um, yeah, when you... Everyone is capturing these old uh, Spider-Man homage covers that McFarlane's doing in Spawn. He's done it in 298, 299, 300. Um, he's just redoing all this stuff that he's done in Spider-Man, which I think is cool because you just never have seen... Uh, I think a artist do that before where he's he's had his own series last as long as it has and he's like copied or redone his own covers before i think it's so neat but here on the cover like i said it's paying tribute to spider-man issue one you got haunt on there on the webs or whatever goo stuff that he uses for his magic and some of you might not even know who haunt really is but it was a character created a while back and a pretty interesting character and now he's in the spawn universe so a lot of people will probably pick this up just for cover itself uh so if this one is your favorite let's vote for it all right next we move on to number three and we have 
Punisher issue one. This is the Alex Ross timeless variant. So we have all these timeless covers that have been released, you know, last year, I think it was. And we never had a Punisher one. Well, now we have that Punisher one. And this is classic, nostalgic Frank Castle. This is the Frank Castle that everybody knows, right? So I have a feeling a lot of people are going to snag this cover uh, because this could be the last time we see this version of Frank Castle. You never know. They could revert back to him, but I don't think that's going to happen, guys. I think we're, we're actually going to have this new version of Frank Castle stick around for a while. That's just my personal opinion there or my thought process. And uh, it's a gorgeous cover. Love the facial expression. Love the hair. It's kind of just overly grown just a little bit. And he's got that kick-ass gun there. And look, just look at that mug. I'm going to shoot your ass. <laughs> That's just the way it looks, right? So awesome cover. If this one is your favorite, let's vote. All right, moving on to number two. This is another Wolverine cover. Makes a countdown every week this year so far. And this is 10 Lives of Wolverine. This is issue four. This is the Granov variant. Now, we had a Bagley cover just like this one. But this one is a just more just more realistic, photorealistic than Bagley. Bagley, you can tell it's his artistic style. This is just more photorealistic and we get to see Weapon X, Logan here just with the machines, uh, the helmet on his head and we get to see that anatomy, that muscular definition on him is absolutely outstanding. Look at those legs, the abs, the chest, the biceps, like dude, the dude's ripped, man. And he just looks like he's going all out full on berserker rage, man. He's just intense. Love that cover. So if this one is your favorite, let's vote for it. All right. And finally, at number one, I don't know. I, I think this might be everyone's favorite, but we'll see what happens. I could be completely wrong with this. Uh, this is Detective Comics issue 1056, cover B, Lee Menjo cardstock variant, uh, paying homage to Death in the Family, right? I thought this cover was awesome as you get to see Batman there holding Robin in his arms after the place has exploded. He's screaming in agony. I mean, this is what you remember, right? <clears throat> Batman holding uh, Robin in his arms and you remember that particular image here. Let me flip it over. This gives you a better and bigger image. That's kind of like what you remember. Very great artwork in its time. But this one just has a much more realistic detail to it. And I put a lot of Liebermenjo covers on here, but they never make it to that second round to get possibly nominated. This one might push it over the edge. We'll see what you guys vote for. So those are all the covers. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I want to know in the comments below, guys, what's your favorite. And I'm glad a lot of you are enjoying the series. It seems to be getting a little bit more traction every single year. And guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell so you don't miss any content from me. From me. And speaking of content, I'll leave you content right here. Me and my son actually went to three different comic shops and uh, we reviewed them and we showed stuff that we bought. We had a blast. So check that video out. And of course, guys, keep buying, keep collecting, and most importantly, still, please always read your comic books. Guys, thank you so much. I'll see you real soon. Bye.